Okay. Thank you all for coming. I'll put the I'll put the background music on. Um, yeah. So thank you all for coming. Um, I thought we could begin with uh, keep it open for, for ventilation or. Okay, so they're, they're on fan, not AC mode, so they're less emissions, just so you know. Um, yeah, so I thought we could begin by just remembering why we're here, like for ourselves. So you can think about somebody in your life, probably somebody you love, um, and you want them to have a good future. Yeah, so we, you can close your eyes or whatever you want, and just think about that person, um, connect with them. And we can use this person as motivation because it's not easy to kind of transition, but we can use that as our love and motivation. So I thought we can just begin with this. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, but all the water had dried up. The world was now much hotter. So Jack and Jill sat on the hill. Their throats were so dry, they couldn't find a drop to drink. And one day, neither will I. Machli Jalki थी रानी जीवन उसका था पानी पर पानी में प्लास्टिक फेंकते रहे हम मछली को तरकते हुए बस देखते रहे हम धीरे धीरे मर गए मछलियां सारी रह गए बस फेंकी हुई चीजें हमारी ट्विंकल ट्विंकल लिटिल स्टार हाउ आई वंडर व्हाट यू आर अप About the smoggy sky, I have never seen. I wonder why the smoke it makes my chest so tight. For every breath, I must fight. Mummies and daddies, आपके बचपन की favorite poems बदल जाएंगे क्योंकि हमारा बचपन climate change की वजह से. That's a very dramatic ending. <laughs> Okay, um, that's why we're here. So don't worry, we're all here in this together. And um, what we see here is our atmosphere. So it's quite it's quite thin. Um, and um, so so that that uh, well actually, but first like let me let me just um, introduce myself. My name is Drew, and I'm just to let you know that I stammer. So I will pause here and there when I'm talking. I'm okay. Don't worry. Um, stuttering again. Yeah. So the climate clock that we saw in the beginning is basically counting down to what's called a tipping point in the Earth's climate, which means that at that point we would have uh, released so, so much, so much, so much carbon pollution into the atmosphere that we may hit what's called run runaway climate change or irreversible climate change. It's possible. It's not a certainty that that'll happen, but you know. So anyway, so but there, 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 there is a window, right? It's maybe a small window, but there is a window, and we can. Um, so anyway, that's why we're here. Um, yeah. So our uh, 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 agenda for today for the climate action workshop is we're going to have five panels um, on electricity, food. Transport, investments, and then materials and consumption, and then followed by like a talk about how how we can to get our build 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 building or uh, so, so society's um, management committee on board. Okay, so let's just go straight into the heart of the the matter. Um, today we will talk about individual responsibility and also collective responsibility. So we as individuals and also in our buildings, residential, office, um, school or anything like that. So anyway, 
This is kind of like the magic number, to so to speak. Again, it's like a like a approximation of various numbers, but so far it's sort of what what seems to be um, and and an accurate number. So basically, if we can individually understand our carbon footprint and keep it below 2,000 kgs of CO2, which actually seems like a lot, right? 2,000 kilos of something is like I don't know as big as this stage, like really heavy. Um, so yeah. So yeah, so we can we can like keep this number in mind. Okay, um, it's human action in some in some areas, right? So so in electricity, in what we eat, in in transport and stuff like that. So um, um, okay, so I'm gonna just write down some numbers here. And by the way, the numbers I'm writing down are my own examples. So. In 2014, I calculated my carbon footprint in each of these areas. Of course, approximations and stuff, but it's just, and like, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of like, you know, through the presentation, I'll like explain these numbers in more detail so we have a, a better idea. Um, so, 2014, and then we have electricity. And yes, that's, so, yeah, anyway. It's it's um, three 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 point two tons. Uh, food approximately one ton. And transport four point eight tons. And there's like materials and investments which I'll talk about later. But of course you can see that it is way higher than this number. <laughs> so anyway, that's why we're here. Um, and. And yeah, just all, yeah, anyway. Just also say like, this is not, um, you know, so basically, it's like, it, it, this can be like a place for um, self-reflection and honesty. And we can just, you know, like, like, I think at times we, we like, like, we feel maybe guilty or ashamed about these things, but we are where we are right now. And then we can see how to, to, to move forward. Anyway, okay. So, okay. Uh, so, so yeah, so so we'll like take it, take it begin like with with the first panel. Uh, so, so, so that do you want to come on stage? So most most of our electricity in Mumbai actually comes it comes from um, coal, um, coal coal power plants. <coughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, fossil 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 fuels fossil fuels are coals. Um, and what I was gonna say actually is. If you have the ACs off, which is also true because it's just running fan, but but like through throughout this presentation, because because we, we have the ACs off, we're actually saving like five kgs of CO two or so. So yeah. Anyway, a big sort of contributor is ACs, but anyway. So basically, it's twofold here. So so it's kind of like reduce the demand, and then uh, um, you know supply that that electricity with renewables or green energy, which we're going to talk about. So in this video, you can see um, it's in Richmond. One, 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 one kind of like a, a solution that we have adopted here is basically to um, um, sort of put motion sensors in um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, in stairwells, so, so on, on alternate floors. And also switch the the um, lights in these stairwells to LEDs. Um, yeah. I. Anyway, yeah. So so I got some numbers here as well. So basically, like you know, since we have so many lights, uh, LED lights, and you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Basically, when, when we switched over to that, we were saving about 16 units per hour in this building. Um, and yeah. That that sort of sort of like resulted in then 13.5 kgs of carbon pollution saved per hour, and the three 24 kg per day. So it can so basically like if we make these kind of changes, it'll then add up. It'll keep accumulating every hour at all. Yeah. And is this for one leg? One two leg? No no no. This is like it's total total. total. Yeah 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 yeah. Total. total. The whole building. If there's um, if there's one takeaway that you go home 
I can do today, so you can, yeah, is, is this. So basically, what you could do is just switch your a part, a flat electricity um, um, sort of um, source to, to green power. So you can like do that with, 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 with Adani. This, this is the link and we can share on the WhatsApp group later. And, and also, Kata has the same thing. Yeah, you shared it okay, already, awesome, yeah. So it's super simple to do. It costs like 66 pesos and more per unit. A little bit more expensive, but I mean like for, 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 for our house per month, it's a few hundred, hundred rupees more. So it's not that much more expensive. Yeah. Okay. Your take on point, and it's possible as well to kind of switch your whole building's common electricity to this as well. So like we're we're actually in the process now of maybe do doing that for Richmond, but yeah, it's on yeah it's on the way. So cool. Okay. Yeah, so what these guys did, who <laughs> were sitting right here, so that was an energy from minus CO2, they helped us install solar panels on our roof at Richmond. Um, yeah, they can kind of share, share more about it. Uh, but but the, um, the simple sort of like math is that to Richmond it was free to install. So zero cost to Richmond um, for the whole system. And uh, we then, we, could, we could began to buy the the, uh, the uh, electricity that these <clears throat> what we're producing for for a cheaper rate than Adani. So a free system in the beginning, and then ongoing electricity costs as well was cheaper. So it's great. So anyway, um, <coughs> yeah, over to you guys. <laughs> yes. So, uh, as Guru said, uh, the electricity that we're consuming right now is mostly coal based. That's a huge challenge and you know electricity generated from coal is one of the largest CO2 contributor to CO2 emissions more than you know the vehicles that we run on petrol. So how do we target that, how do we solve that problem is by actually generating clean energy. So there are there are two approaches to it. Government does is find patches of land, installs lots of solar power panels or wind or you know hydro projects and Gets the, generates the electricity maybe in Rajasthan or some part of Maharashtra like the Satara and then that electricity we get. That's it. That is what you know one way to look at it. The other approach is you know decentralized. Something at Richmond we can generate for our own electricity needs. For example, here we are generating 80 kilowatts of electricity, which is closer to 350 units per day. Our consumption is close to 500, 550 units per day. It varies depending on depending on the usage and AC usage, uh, definitely. But we are targeting close to 70% of the electricity that we are consuming at Richmond is green energy. Obviously that number will change. So to give you some number, uh, in the last year, we have commissioned the power plant in October 2022. And uh, till now we have consumed 1,47,000 units. Richmond just common facilities, the lifts, ACs, banquet halls, uh, and the loads related to that. So we consumed 1,47,000 units in the last 9 months. Of that, 89,000 units have come from the solar power plant that we have installed on top of the roof. Obviously, there will be uh, our needs will be more than what we are generating from solar power plant. So we have uh, consumed 60,000 units more than what uh, on top of the uh, uh, from the solar units, which is close to you know 1,47,000 is our total consumption. And a surprising number that I can give you. How impactful this is! We have we have saved 70 tons of CO2 emissions that would have otherwise we could have consumed it from Adani, which is coal based electricity. Uh, over a period of this is as of today. As of today, yes. So actually, actually we just calculated it last night. Yeah. So no, but in how much time? Nine months. Nine, nine months from nine months. October to today. Mm -hmm. Seventy thousand kgs, which is seventy thousand kgs. What is the number you had to explain? Uh, so, 2000. 2000. per person. Yeah. So, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. So, and this is obviously going to happen throughout. Yes. So, so at Finance CO2, our vision is to make sure uh, the shift to renewable energy is easy. For example, at Richmond, it's not that you know they didn't want to put in the initial investment. 
there's, there's initial investment that is attached with any solar power plant. So what we did is we took up the initial investment and we signed an agreement for supply of electricity. Then in the maintenance, everything is taken care of by us, even the insurance, and it will only pays for the electricity that is generated from the solar power plant. So that's what we want uh, to offer you guys free evaluation of, of any of your societies. We'll come down, we'll tell you how much of electricity we can generate from the roof that we have, and definitely we can take up the initial investment and use the sign and agreement and we will supply it to you. That is something that we want to offer. Mm -hmm. So what we did in Richmond, so just, just, just to kind of clarify, what we did here was this company minus CO2 kind of came in and said, okay, we can basically install solar panels on your roof for free. So like they came in like, did, did like first like a, like a, a, a free evaluation of our rooftop to, to kind of see how, how, how much we can to generate. And actually what they're offering as well for all buildings and so, societies here is the same thing. So. They can, they can come to your building, go to the roof, and make a, like a study and see how much you can generate. And, and then after that, there, there are different models, but, but the, um, the, um, the um, model that we chose it was like a free model, essentially. Yes. Yeah. So right now, the electricity that we purchase from Adani is at 30 rupees. What at specifically at this point we have done is you know, supplied the electricity at 8 rupees 50 pesos. People are still getting Yes, close to 30 to 40 savings without, you know, investing in it. For the 10 year tenure, we'll be getting into a contract and after 10th year, we'll be transferring the solar power plant to Richmond for free of cost. And the life of this plan? 25 years. Yes, yeah, so you have 15 years of where you don't have to pay us at all. Because people would want to know also. Yes, yes, absolutely. All buildings can install them in here and run it. Any building which has shadow free space can, can install it. Maybe because of the space, uh, but we can come and take a look. Yes, 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, what Richmond uh, implement and what other options are available, then we can take it to our manual committee and say that uh, I was here for this workshop and I heard this and I would like to share this with you and just a very small case study and then probably I can talk to them and that would probably help each one of us in our respective. Yes. Yes. And in fact, the last session today is going to be a session by the chairman of Richmond to kind of talk about how to get these uh, proposals passed in your building. So anyway, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. This is a trailer. Cool. So good. Because um, we are we are kind of like short on time, so I'm moving it along because if you want to leave by 12.50, then I, we have to move a little faster. So this 3.4 number, or 3.2, okay, 3.4 on my slides, um, this is how it, it emerged. You can have a look at the slide and read it for, for 15 seconds or so. Yeah, so, hey, hey, welcome. Yeah, so basically, like you, can, like you can see, the AC is the largest contributor because it, you know, uses a lot of electricity, and secondly, you, you know, if we if, if we actually like we sleep with the AC at night, it's on the whole night. So it just you know it consumes a lot of electricity. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Um, and now, um, so yeah. So anyway, this is the current status. I like I try like not to use an AC at times. My like whoop whoop my um whoop 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 um whoa in the summer will like you know put my AC on for, for an hour or so before I'm sleeping, so that still happens, but but you know, so it's much less than before. And also, what like we have um, done in, in our house now is we've like um, uh, switched to a switch to Adani's green power 100%. So, so and now, like 
in our apartment, we are getting like renewable electricity and of course our solar flare. Okay, so um, since we already kind of asked questions, I'm gonna move on to food. If there's some burning question, we can take one, but if not, then we can do it later. That's a great question. It's not some guaranteed thing, which is why it's important to, to reduce as well, right? Because, but basically what, what that kind of means from, from our understanding is that we are supporting Adani or Tata Power to, so, so essentially like the, the money, 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 we like pay, pay, pay to, to a utility to can fund the coal power plant operations and new coal power plants, or it can fund uh, renewable electricity coal power plants, yeah. So, and also this program that we had seen before is actually um, gov gov um, gov government, government regulated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a government scheme sort of a thing. So it's, you know, it's our trust, but at the same time, you know, if possible, reduce first and then switch to renewables. So whatever you can. In some ways, and also, and financial also. Exactly, exactly. It's a good question, though, for, for the audience to hear. So, in the monsoon season, what percent less are the solar panels? Um, Generated. Is so it, the, the 350 number that uh, that's it that will probably drop to about 200 per day 150 to 200. But the best months are in in our environment are April, May, uh, and February sometimes. Uh, sorry, March, April, May. Then you get up to 450 to 500. So over the year it balances out. Okay. And, you know what we give a number is the average number. Okay, so we'll pause there for electricity. Um, on WhatsApp and even in person, you can ask them more questions later. So, so because they're like our partners now, so they're going to be here to take your calls and everything. So, thank you guys so much. Huh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. On the WhatsApp group, actually, there are subgroups now. So, so anyway, I can talk about, about that later too. But yes, you can you can get their contact very easily. Okay, so let's switch to food. It's important too. So, can we have our our four four panelists on stage, please? And if you want to make it fun, you can give them a round of applause. <laughs> so thank you, over to you. Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Pink Pink Kaur, and of course I'm Hawaii based. 65 years of age. And uh, today I'll talk about food. I've been very passionate about food since many, many years. And I've been in a, in a corporate job, but uh, food was always my passion. And um, what I realized over the, over the period of years is whatever food we eat, we have to think of two things in mind. One is what is the digestion load it is giving to my body? And second is what is the cost to earth, uh, the food that we're eating? So in my research, in my exploration, in my meeting people, I, I, I realized that uh, getting uh, dairy free was one of the main main things that we should do. I mean, so I became dairy free almost in uh, 2006, or 18 years ago when I became vegan. Because I realized that when you're eating, when you're taking a lots of dairy, you know, you're also feeding the cattle. So 70% of today's uh, agriculture is cattle feed, and only 30% is for humans. So we are, because of cattle feed, we are deforesting. We are, you know, the, uh, the, the carbon dioxide uh, is not being, not being absorbed in, in the air. So all this, there's so much of pollution happening. And today, the, uh, it's very sad to know that India is one of the largest exporters of beef, only because of cattle. So we are breeding cattle. We are breeding cattle so that we can feed, we are feeding them so that we can eat them. And that is what we are doing today. And that is why, that is why we are having so much of dairy, that the dairy industry has really um, grown bounds and leaps uh, thanks to lots of misinformation that we have about dairy, thanks to um, uh, lots of marketing um, that, that happens. The lobby is very, very strong. But um, 
but I know uh, when we when we eat uh, meat or fish yeah, or, or dairy, we are not only uh, spoiling our own health, but we are also spoiling the health of the animals. I mean, look at the torture. There's so many videos uh, today about about the cruelty to to cattle, cruelty to uh, to uh, the cows, the buffaloes, the poultry farm. If you ever go uh, to a gaushala, a commercial gaushala, if you ever been, you will see they are in a very very sad sad state of affairs. The the cattle, we are eating them. Like the last um, fear, the last emotion any any uh, animal would have when you when you slaughter them is fear, and that fear comes to us when we eat them. You know, it is it is the emotion of the food that we are eating. So uh, it is very important that we eat more of uh, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, because that is the type of food, because that is the vibration we get. Fruit trees are grown by nature for us to eat. Because fruits, when you eat fruits, and then you throw away the seeds, you know, the earth has more food to grow. I realized this, I think, almost last year. So since March 22, I turned fruitarian. So it's been almost 15, 16 months now. That I'm eating only and only fruits because it is it is also helping the universe because there is no grain because there is no grain and this is my little personal contribution towards towards um, um, deforesting not happening because when you grow grains uh, there's lots of deforesting happening because you want to grow lots of meat and lots of rice they require lots of water you know and we are we have to conserve water as much as we can so when we are growing this rice and wheat, it is not really our human food. That, that is meant for the cattle. It is not meant for us. We are, we are born to eat only fresh fruits and vegetables. That's what our ancestors millions of years back did. Luck and eat. There was no fire. I don't know when we learned, when we introduced fire, we learned about fire, we learned about cooking and we learned about salt. So my journey of last uh, one year of fruits have been very amazing. It is not only, really, I mean, um, it was not, I mean, I didn't have any lifestyle disease to reverse, but I, I realized it is not only good for, for me as, as a human being, it's also good for the universe. This is how, this is how we have a little bit helped. I'm not saying that suddenly you, you turn a vegetarian, but at least try to transcend it, you know, go low on grains, go zero on dairy, go zero on any animal protein. So that is the way, and maybe we can have a, a little like tender leaves, vegetables like lettuce or baby spinach or spinach. So when we eat that type of food, we are not only doing ourselves a favor, we are not only uh, giving less or zero digestion load to our body, by, by which we remain healthy, but we are also contributing a lot to the universe by eating the right stuff. That is very, very important for us to do. So, that is my, my sum up of today. Good. Uh, you, you want to play the video or no? Yeah, I just want to play a short video. Let me show us. Uh... Now, Duniya ki 70% kheti janwaron ka khana ugaane ke liye ki jati hai. 70% kheti. Or sirf 30% kheti mein insano ke liye khana ugaaya jata hai. 8 billion insano ke liye. Ye number kohan hai? Koi padke bata sakta hai kya? Maths ka test ho raha aapka. हमारी पॉपुलेशन इस कितनी है आठ बिलियन ये है अस्सी बिलियन हमारी पॉपुलेशन है आठ सौ करोड़ ये है आठ हजार करोड़ ये नंबर है उन जानवरों को जो हम हर साल मार के खा जाते हैं एट थाउजेंड करोड़ एनिमल्स मुर्गा बकरा गाय भैंस सब इसमें मेजोरिटी चिकन होते हैं सेवेंटी टू हंड्रेड करोड़ वो होते हैं आपके चिकन होते हैं इसमें तो इतने सारे जानवर जो हम खाते हैं उनके लिए खाना कहां से आता है आठ हजार करोड़ जानवर सेवेंटी परसेंट खाना जो हम खाना उगाते हैं वो इन जानवरों को खिलाया जाता है और इनसे हमें कैलोरी कितनी मिलती है कोई गैस करो नंबर आपको कुछ आइडिया हो कितनी कैलोरी मिलती है अठारह परसेंट मतलब हम सत्तर परसेंट जमीन यूज करके इन जानवरों को पैदा करके इनकी लाइफ स्लेवरी में और कंफाइनमेंट में रख के अठारह कैलोरी ड्राइव करते हैं एट वॉट कॉस्ट अपने जंगल काट के वन थर्ड ऑफ द वाटर यूज होता है इनको ब्रीड करने में और ग्रो करने में वन थर्ड ऑफ द फ्रेश वाटर जो ड्रिंक कर सकते हैं हम दुनिया अपने अपने पूरे वाटर में कितना ड्रिंकेबल वाटर है हमारे यहाँ वन परसेंट राइट 
सेवेंटी परसेंट तो हम पी नहीं सकते दो हमारा प्लानट सेवेंटी परसेंट वाटर है सेवेंटी परसेंट पानी हम कंज्यूम ही नहीं कर सकते सिर्फ वन परसेंट यूज करते हैं उसमें वन परसेंट में वन थर्ड वाटर इन जानवरों को ब्रेस करने में उनका खाना उगाने में यूज किया जाता है तो अगर आपके यहाँ कोई भूखा सो रहा है उसका कारण यह है कि कोई चिकन खा रहा है उसका चिकन के लिए उसने चार किलो अनाज खिलाया उसको तब जाके वो इतना मोटा हुआ और एक किलो अनाज एक किलो चिकन में कितने लोग खा सकते हैं एक किलो चिकन आप लोग खाते हो कई लोग चिकन कितने खा सकते हैं तीन जने तीन जने राइट ठीक है दैट्स करेक्ट दैट्स करेक्ट दैट्स करेक्ट और उसको चिकन को कितना अनाज खिलाना पड़ता है उसको मोटा करने के लिए फोर के जी चार किलो कॉर्न में कितने लोग खाना खा लेंगे चार किलो ग्रेन्स में कितने लोग खाना खा लेंगे दस बीस खा लेंगे तो ये इनजस्टिस है कि नहीं है जब हमारे पास दुनिया में इंसानों को खिलाने के लिए खाना नहीं है तो हम जानवरों को ब्रीड करके उनकी जिंदगी नरक बना के उनको खा रहे हैं अपने जंगल डिस्ट्रॉय करके ये कौन सबसे इंटेलिजेंट स्पीसीज ही कर सकता है प्लान का राइट but i work with farmers across the country who grow organic produce i work with ayurveda doctors on experts in sustainability to make chemical free products for our daily life um so there's just one very basic question i ask all of you if on a plate i put a tomato and next to it i put a cockroach which is moving like it's alive and you're scared of the cockroach so you start spraying hit on the cockroach and some of that hit has gone on the tomato as well and then i'll take that tomato i'll wash it in water and i'll ask you to eat it will you eat it you know there was hit on it so is there anybody in this room who will eat that tomato so this is what happens in chemical farming um the kind of chemicals they spray on fruits and vegetables and grains that go in your tummy it's horrendous go to any shop in this world where they sell chemical fertilizers and just read the label every single label has the word poison written on it with that skull face and you know that whole warning that don't consume and when you spray that on your grains on your fruits and your veggies and then you just wash it and eat it it is going inside it's going through the skin it's in the soil it's penetrating the food If you feed me chemicals every day indirectly, it will be in me. If you feed it to the soil, it will go to the fruits and vegetables. So it's not like just because you washed it in warm water at home that means it's gone. It's inside your produce as well. So for the sake of your own health, it's very important to eat chemical-free, naturally grown, organic food. Secondly, when you put these chemicals in the soil, it kills. microorganisms in the soil just a little bit of urea powder that farmers use so freely everywhere it kills earthworms within a matter of 30 seconds and as soon as these microorganisms and these bigger beings such as earthworms tortoises such as snails and crabs in the fields as soon as they die the system collapses on the farm because these little beings they help the farmers in tilling they help in rain water harvesting they make the soil flowerable and fertile for the farmers themselves so when these beings are alive on the farm it creates an entire ecosystem to eat these beings birds will come so it causes you know it uh, starts this whole system of life on the farm which is very important in natural and organic food so when you buy such food that is natural that is organic you are making a choice you are directly your actions are contributing towards a healthier tomorrow for nature as well as for yourself for your own body it's not a joke now that cancer cases are rising through the roof you you take out data from any hospital go to hiranandan hospital go to apani hospital cancer is rising through the roof in the last 10 years and it has a direct correlation with what we eat what we breathe inside us how we live our life it has a direct correlation and now it's more important than ever to make sustainable choices and i would like to back up pinky ji for what she said that pitching dairy pitching animal produce and products is extremely important when we talk about veganism that if we don't eat the animal itself 
but if we drink milk is that fine this is just facts i'm not making this up you all can you know read up on this that when male babies are born to mother cows there's no point male children are not going to give milk in the future they are discarded immediately they are left to die and uh, female children of cows are promoted to live because at some point she will give milk so you know it's monetary benefits for the farmers um when the cow stops giving milk she is immediately discarded because there's no point to keep her alive who's going to feed the cow every day when she's of no monetary use to the farmer or to the dairy person um every year they force the cow to get pregnant so that she can keep giving milk any female animal mammal or human will not produce milk if they are not lactating they will only give milk if they recently had a baby so any cow constantly goes through this process of getting pregnant delivering a baby so that she can keep lactating and this makes her tired cows usually live suppose they live 30 years in today's day a cow lives only 15 to 16 years because she's dead from inside and right? going through this process again and again so this back to back pregnancy back to back pregnancy and there's this very famous lassi wala called as bhajan lal on the highway people go there to consume lassi just go there once to see how the, the buffalo that kept right there a female buffalo will not release milk till her calf is fed she has the power to hold the milk inside no matter how hard you touch her she is not going to secrete milk every morning they give an injection to those buffaloes which forces the milk to come out even if she is trying to hold that in and when we consume dairy we choose that we 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 close our eyes to the suffering of animals and we say that hame dikh nahi raha so we don't want to face this but this is the reality it's not easy to quit these things 100% you know we all have our religious sentiments we have emotional needs we grew up eating a certain foods we like eating some foods it's okay but can we at least reduce our consumption if not start if if not cutting it out 100% can we try to come back face our steps back and mindfully consume can we buy our dairy products from farms that take care of such things that don't torture these cows to such an extreme level um there is ari forest in goregao it's connected goregao to bhai go there i have gone to two goshalas there you know what they feed the cows they feed them palmiji biscuits and chocolate <laughs> this is not a food that cows are supposed to eat they are not supposed to eat corn flakes they you feed them feed because people also feed them chapatis it is it's a religious function they go going to khana de de gao ko you know this time it is not the cow's food it's not how food yeah. and uh, when you feed her maida and you feed yeah. her all these things it's they feed her palmiji and chocolates because dood meetha aega and then they give it to dairy industry uh, to these mithai walas in bombay ki uski achhi mithai nikle di is that it's it's not good on our yeah seriously <laughs> so on our account uh, a lot of stuff happens and we have the power nobody else no government no nothing where you put your money you put your choice that industry will thrive it's very simple man and we are just sharing this because we've learned this in the last few years five years six years of our life and now these thoughts dominate our uh, thinking on an everyday basis and we are sharing this so that if this these ideas resonate with you we can consciously make a change towards how we eat natural food and how we choose food that takes care of us takes care of the environment and, and the beings that are there in this Uh, I am Gaurang. I'm here representing uh, uh, Monks Group, which is a organization, social enterprise, and a community that we've been building for about seven years now. Uh, so we work on two things: safe food and regenerative farming. Uh, at Monks Group, each of us wakes up each day to inspire people to change their food habits rooted in nutrition and tradition. And when I say rooted in nutrition and tradition, what i mean by rooted in nutrition is not just nutrition in the food but more importantly nutrition in the soil because if there's no nutrition in the soil our food will never be uh, nutrition heavy uh, when i say rooted in uh, tradition uh, it's not just about traditional food yes it is about traditional foods it is about using traditional seeds and more importantly as we've been talking using traditional methods of farming so indian farmers 
uh, I wouldn't say have lost all their uh, uh, traditional knowledge or know-how about uh, how to farm or how to get into uh, traditional ways of farming. It's just that the process over the past few decades has forced them to do that. So we as a monks group work on helping them, supporting them, I wouldn't use the word helping, sorry for that, supporting them in terms of just providing them the means and giving them the platform to go forward and work on the traditional practices. Uh, I just share a short story of how we got into it and uh, how we found our answers to it. So about seven, eight years back, we met this person called Julius Rego. He used to run a, a one acre organic farm, natural farm or a regenerative farm uh, in a children's cancer hospital uh, based in Khargar. What used to grow organic, natural, chemical free vegetables over there for the children in the cancer hospital. He used to go volunteer out there and there are two things he predominantly focused on and told us. One is that organic farming, natural farming or regenerative farming as we call it is a solution for the complete agricultural crisis and it's not just a fad as most of us uh, go out to see. And the second thing he told which is the most profound thing uh, and which has stuck with us is that we as humans are a part of nature and not separate from it. If we just try to sit back and understand this one phrase that we are a part of nature and we are not separate from it, most of the questions can be answered and, and I don't think there will be any disharmony in the whole system out there. So these are two things which have stayed with us and based on that we've been uh, working on uh, farming practices rooted in tradition and nutrition uh, and what we can do as individuals and as part of the society is two important things. One is whoever you are buying your food from, may it be a farmer, may it be a shop or may it be an organization. Let's spend some time having that conversation with those people, trying to understand where is the food coming from, what are the methods, farming practices that are being used. Yes, there are terms like organic and natural, uh, which are in some way also being used very loosely. But when you have that conversation, when you ask the right questions to those people, you will surely get your answers. So, so that is one thing. And second, which you've been adding when it comes to food and when, if you're talking about climate change, most of our food, yes, because of the systems that we are getting into again, uh, we are forced to sell food in, in plastic. So what we've tried to do, secondly, try to uh, promote or uh, try to uh, promote people to consume local from local vendors or local uh, people and try to get into zero waste deliveries. Uh, so within Mumbai, we, we offer these zero waste deliveries, which we can do in glass bottles uh, or, or paper bags. And that I think in terms of the conversation of climate change, in terms of the conversation about reducing carbon footprint uh, can go in a long way. Uh, we have Kirtika here who's been one of our earliest and continuous supporters for that. And uh, yeah, thanks to uh, people like her and a lot more, we've been able to transition at least 20 to 25% of our deliveries within Mumbai to zero waste and, and plastic free. Also uh, like adding the chemical free food to it. So, yeah. Food, we have to think ourselves as part of nature. And then we can then Right? Can I sit there? Yeah, you want to sit here? Yeah. Hi, I'm Hana. I'm into waste management. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through some slides. This is uh, the composters here at Richmond itself. So they, did, they send zero of their wet food waste to the landfills. So uh, we generate the largest waste in, uh, in India as a city. Just Mumbai generates 10,000 tons of waste every single day, not a month, a year, but every single day. Now what happens is landfills are 25% the reason for greenhouse gases. The methane gas from landfills all over the world are 25 times more potent as a, uh, more harmful as a, uh, more toxic and harmful as a greenhouse gas compared to CO2. So like he said, Nature is part of us and we are just dumping this waste. We, it's mandatory to segregate, but still the government is sending it to landfills. It's not sustainable anymore and we are all connected. The toxins from the landfills go down into the groundwater and then go into the marine life and it's uh, uh, polluting our waters. And also most, a lot of the waste either goes into the oceans. Like if you have done a beach cleanup, uh, you can see how much waste that is going into the oceans. In, by 2050, there'll be more fish in the, more plastic in the oceans than fish. So you don't mix your masalas, you don't dip your uh, biscuits in um, 
soap and eat it. So why are you mixing your waste and why are you not processing your waste? So there are different types of waste, uh, you know. But the main thing to understand is 60% of your waste is water. I mean, 60% of your waste is food, 80% of your food is water. So you're paying the BMC to transport water and make it more toxic. So rather instead of sending 100% to the landfill, our aim should be to send 0% to the landfill. And that's what we do. I mean, uh, even uh, the 10% that can be, uh, that can go to landfill gets, uh, goes to the incinerator by the BMC. So we are authorized BMC vendors and we send zero waste to the landfill. So let's say the total organic waste in the city is 60%. So 45% comes from homes. So certainly individual actions matter. Now, like you saw in um, Richmond, there are two ways you can do it. In-house in your society, you can do it individually or you can do it at the society. At the society level, uh, we have these drums, you can install them and very easily you can send zero of your food waste to the landfills. And also we offer another service, which is a waste pickup. We just charge 100 rupees per month per flat sign an agreement with the society and we will pick up everything. We have a center at uh, Mankur and at uh, Uttarship where we compost the food waste and we recycle the dry waste. Everything can be recycled. Yes, paper, metal, plastic, glass, all waste, garden waste, everything other than debris is picked up by us. And uh, as a society also can we sign up for that? Yes. We, we offer this for societies only, 100 rupees per month per flat. Whether it's a 10 flat society or 1000 flat society, we will pick it up. And, and this is paid by the society? Yes. Per flat, per, flat, per, flat, per, per flat, month. Per month. So that is not a cup of a chai. And in that, you are achieving zero waste to landfill. And that is the need of the hour today. So we have installed these composters in schools. We also leaves. You can easily put in a leaf composter. Today, what do we do with our leaves? We burn them. We're creating more fossil fuel and more, you know, harmful gases. So, rather than that, you just have to water these uh, leaves once a day and once a week put in one teaspoon of microbes in the uh, water. So, that's what we do. This is our service where we, we pick up your waste daily. And uh, why should you compost? These are the reasons. Composting is nature's way of recycling. Uh, instead of sending it to the landfills, when you, you know, it, uh, it reduces the demand of plants and trees. It attracts earthworms. Uh, it gives, so these are the lot, there are many, many benefits of, of composting. And what is compost? It's basically instead of, when you mix your e-waste, your dry waste and your wet waste, you are toxifying all your waste. You cannot, if you don't segregate, you can't compost. And what is compost? It is nature's way of to grow. You're just making the food go back to nature and making it manure by adding certain um, uh, accelerators, natural accelerators. It's really simple. Either you call us, we do it, or you do it at your level. But it's a must. 10,000 tons of waste a day. There are many, many different kinds of composting. And uh, so this is at our center. We, we, we further segregate the waste. Uh, so I just wanted to say that please get in touch with us and take this initiative to your society. It's not easy to convince a society sometimes because they say BMC is picking it up for free. But there are laws now that has been on free. Uh, then at 100 rupees, you are choosing zero waste to landfill. At 60 rupees, they are creating toxins. At 100 rupees, yes, they are just dumping it away. They are paying people to dump it. There is a big, whatever. So even if we segregate, we give it to people. They are mixing and segregating. They are mixing and segregating. So rather than this, you know, we really do, we pay for so many things in our life. But why are we not paying for our waste to be processed? So thank you. Mm -hmm. At home, but niche in the uh, drums, it's okay because we further say nobody gives us 100% segregated. So, what's that like mixed waste also you get a segregated? Yeah. But it's now law to segregate at home at source. So, don't, 
के लिए हाउस को मैं मिक्स कर लूंगी आप नीचे जाके अलग करो दैट डजंट वर्क यू हैव टू डू दैट सॉस एट होम राइट फूड एंड नॉन फूड मच बेटर वे टू डू इट फूड इज सिंपल ऑल योर फूड दैट विल बी कंपोस्टेड इज इन वन बैच एवरीथिंग एल्स इज इन नॉन फूड सो 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 um this is our balcony at Richmond so kind of coming full cycle our compost came back to our balcony this year and we began growing uh uh pudina methi palak uh tomatoes are 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 growing now some 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 unknown squash is also growing that was in the compost and it's so healthy so it's anyway it's beautiful um yeah so anyway so it's possible on a small level as well to 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 then kind of like take your compost back and grow in your uh, um in your in your balcony if you have space and our plan also at Richmond hopefully is is actually is actually make like a like a Richmond organic garden in in like yeah I think all those all those of us who have the provision of space should grow our own fruits and vegetables which is very important yeah we are nature right so we have to grow ourselves okay you give back the ready compost to the society yes. yeah so from you invite from us and just give it all back good um we're running out of so that which is driving the collecting of this stuff uh those are we're not really i'm sometimes not sure whether they are really biodegradable doesn't matter because we recycle the plastic Make pellets and goes back to manufacture. So when you send it to the to the BMC, it's not getting recycled. But when you give it to me, it's getting recycled. Okay. So just sorry. No. Oh, okay. The book. Okay. Uh, so uh, just one short thing. Uh, so if any one of us wants to understand. Uh, natural farming or regenerative farming in detail and wants to understand the thought process behind it there is this uh, brilliant book called one straw revolution i'm sure some of you would have already read it uh, so we've kept a few copies there if anyone wants to uh, know uh, get one uh, they can have a uh, look at it and, and and get one copy uh yeah it's a great book i i haven't read the whole thing but i've skimmed through it and speaking of books there's there's a, there's some some small books there as well that like are for lending for for our community so there's like a QR code there to like to, to like you join in like a library group and then you you can just just like to say like like what book you've borrowed in your name and then that's it just just take the book home and then we'll at some point meet again and give the book back <laughs> so okay so so now um just speaking of numbers again because we're talking about climate change and carbon footprint and stuff so just like some simple numbers in 2014 my um um car carbon pollution was was close close to um 1 1000 kg of co2 so like like i said here for one ton um yeah so you can read the slide and um now that i've switched to a vegan diet a whole food mainly so less processed foods um kind of lifestyle it's actually in in half almost is my is my carbon footprint from food and my food waste actually that thanks to um daily dump now in Richmond and Mana who who who, who but by the way is from the or or yeah, yeah is a partner the, of daily I'm dump and the partner of daily dump in Mumbai it's a lovely organization um based in Bangalore they're the ones who make these community and home compost So yeah, so now food waste is zero kg of carbon because it's all composted. So fantastic. Good. We're about half an hour behind schedule, just so you know. So one p.m. will end. Hope you're okay with that. But we'll kind of any any kind of burning questions for food, or should we move on to uh, transport? The food that's coming from water and hydro hydroponics. Hydroponics. There is a vendor in from Verona from whom we get uh, produce and to pour it. I will go back and ask him if that is chemical free food. Now I will ask for clarification. So generally, is that kind of food grown in water? Is that chemical free or not? What is that? So uh, two two things on that. One, mostly it is not chemical free. 
uh, also in terms of organic there are just in short uh, there are two specific divides that have been created one is what we call it commercial organic which is just buying organic fertilizers and using them so the on the packet you read organic where they would have played around with it in some ways and obviously there is another which we call it natural farming organic farming regenerative in a, in a traditional way where uh, things like cow dung for a lack of better uh, understanding so uh, cow dung and things like which is around the farm is used usually so with things like hydropony usually those market uh, bottles are used in terms of nutrition giving to the thing so mostly it is not organic and second the systems that are created those create a lot of carbon footprint as well because one they are mostly plastic systems and a lot of electricity usually also air conditioned that is another uh, uh, comparatively if you can get something from the soil uh, that is that is the best route yeah exactly to 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 kind of keep it simple soil like healthy soil means healthy food yeah. and growing a, a food in water it's no, not the same as healthy soil thank you food guys <laughs> thank you okay um take 15 20 seconds 30 seconds to just read the slide i won't say anything because too much talking i have one question on organic uh, how much can we trust the certification of organic cool so you, you all kind of like read, read, read the slide okay does it make sense any yes any questions so my favorite way of traveling to delhi is rajdani 16 hours second ac i get the uh, side lower great window just relax and it's literally yeah it's like six times less polluting and fun and great food okay Oh yeah, so a great resource. So if you must fly, of course, if you must fly, fly eco class, which is economy class. Of course, it's not really eco, but it still has huge footprint. But if you must fly, Google Flights has a great um, search platform called um, Google Flights, sorry, Google Flights. And basically you can actually kind of see the carbon footprint of the flight. From, from, from my understanding, it's pretty accurate, so you can use that, but Multiply it by two, <laughs> because Google recently, late last year, um, um, reduced the emissions from their, their platform because they, so, so basically when um, you like, when you place carbon emissions in the air, it causes more global warming or climate change than like, like a car on the ground. So Google, Google had said that like that that kind of science isn't like one one hundred percent certain. So like they they um, removed that um, 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 that kind of part. But most scientists agree that it still matters. Yeah, if I can add to that, yeah. and actually what happens is the water vapor which is emitted at the air they form condensation trails and that causes certain particular type of clouds to be created which sort of reflect back the long wave radiation of the earth and put back inside so that is doubling the emissions so the non co2 emissions of aircraft is equivalent to the co2 emissions so the global warming impact is actually double so that that's the reason why this is sort of doubling awesome that's a science answer my answer was this common person so yeah so so essentially what you see here double it just double it okay Flight should, uh, passengers should go with a non-AC flight. <laughs> <laughs> reduce it like... Non-AC, second AC doesn't make a difference. No, no, flight it won't. It's a joke, I know. Yeah. I'm not making it. It'll be healthy also, it's best for me. Yeah, I agree. Non-AC flights, I mean, if you can invent that, you'll... Anyway, just, we're, we're like a mask, right? Original flights like that. Uh-huh, exactly. So, again, 15, 20 seconds to read that slide. Ah, uh, so of course, walk, bike, rollerblade, skateboard. Bike is not safe. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can, you can take it. So I'll just uh, maybe. Uh, so I'm part of the Richmond uh, building itself, and some of the things that Lou mentioned about having 
being liberated from Adani and things other things that we are doing. And I sort of why I am here is because I have an electric car and I've been using it for three years. And if there are any questions around that, uh, obviously some of the maths that is mentioned here does hold true. Uh, I think some of the I preempt a few questions. So I am just a, sharing one of the questions that we also internally debated is you are doing electric car, but what about the grid, right? That's the classic question that comes up. That the grid is still coal based. I think India is seventy percent coal, overall fossil is eighty ninety percent. Uh, so I'll answer that question in a way. Even if you do take hundred percent coal, the hundred percent coal emissions plus electricity from an energy efficiency point of view, is, electric is still better. The reason being the thermal efficiency at the coal power plant into the electrical efficiency of a car that is still higher than pure combustion of the petrol or diesel that whatever you are using. So in one way that makes sense. The second question that people tend to ask is the upfront emissions are quite high, like. The battery itself, lithium battery is a very big uh, issue, and that's also a very valid point. I think so. We did the study, and we what we found out that around maybe between fifty to seventy thousand kilometers is where the break-even point comes for a hundred percent coal grid. Now, so the point is, if you are having electric car, it shouldn't ideally be your second car. Sometimes it has to be the primary car where you keep on using it. So if you are using it more. Then only you will be getting the carbon payback. And the third point is climate change is such a complicated problem that a lot of the people are attacking the problem simultaneously. So we cannot assume that the grid is not changing. The grid is also changing. The lithium extraction is also getting more efficient from a battery point of view. So what we think is these are parallel problems that are being solved. So we as consumers, if we are able to build that demand for electric vehicles, then that definitely. Uh, as more and more people get to more affordable cars like what happened in tesla that they started with a sports car and now they are on to a, a a more affordable electric car so as consumers we sometimes shouldn't get bogged down to what is happening in the grid rest assured there are people trying to solve the grid as well uh, so that's the preempting some of the questions there but again i'll keeping the since the time is short happy to answer any more questions on electric cars if i have any knowledge on that Ah, so good charging is a good question. I'll uh, so there are three types of sort of charging which are there. One is the super fast DC charging. Uh, one generally your car is, uh, provider also gives you one charger. So uh, we have a charger at Richmond itself, which you can buy one more charger if you wanted to at your office place. That generally is an AC charger which is slower. You can at worst have it plugged into your three phase itself. Now the charging times of all these three are pretty different. Super fast DC will be like almost like one and one one and a half hour full charge. AC that the, the company gives will be like six eight hours, and then uh, slow three phase will be again the whole night. So few examples. There are now enough charging stations available in India. So one of my friends actually did a golden quadrilateral on electric car, and he was able to do it. So it's not a big, uh, and it's a public so you can find good information on that. So I actually went to uh, Pune. Not at all planning where to charge, and the assumption was when I get there, I will get it, find the charger. I was able to easily find the fast charging solution. So you still require more planning than a normal car, but that's the effort, right? The effort that you are putting in food or effort you are putting in electricity. Similarly, in transport, you need to put that additional effort of planning, but then you should be able to definitely afford. It's like we have a charger which is enough. Uh, at our indoor parking spot, in a way, which is there, but and it's your own personal parking spot. Yeah. But it's a, a oh, common so charging com point. No, no, it's not a common charging. Point. It's not a common charging. Point. Okay, so that is a common two charging points. No, no, no. Society of ten to fifteen No, I think that is a um, again. That's the whole conversation today, right? That how we are engaging more, and if yeah. maybe multiple managing committees where it's already allowed, they talk to it. That yeah. maybe help in. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, all these we, yeah, we like. So are they going to try? Yeah, yeah, we can move on. To... So, so uh, I think let's pause there. But we can then, discuss separately. Yeah, you can discuss separately. Discuss yeah. on WhatsApp. Yeah. We're running out of time, so you have to keep on moving. Sorry. Huh. We do also have an EV charging station. Uh, <laughs> <Good. laughs> Solar EV stations. Yeah. But I said at this point that. Uh, 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 I'll mention the SUV. The SUV versus the sedan. Also. Uh -huh. I think one important point is also the SUV versus sedan debate. 
because from an aerodynamic perspective suv doesn't suv is one of the quote unquote not a very good invention and not a very good cultural export that us has done so uh, so it is very inefficient in a way then again not that we don't have own suvs we do but overall go down the route of a more aerodynamically efficient car first principle basis just more energy efficient that just keep that in mind absolutely so just to kind of move, keep moving forward um yeah so again like this example again 4.8 tons of carbon pollution for me in 2014 so so uh, flying is by far the worst thing you can do for the climate uh and especially international flights as you can see mumbai new york round trip 3.6 tons so it's like double <laughs> sorry no, I think there's no alternate for that it's true but so, so you know so one, one of the lens of i actually do fly a lot in a way uh, full disclosure there uh so one of the things that we are uh, trying to do is more at that when there are no alternatives you look at a system level change and where can you do a system level change and one of the things that i try to do is go for airlines which have a more path towards sustainable aviation fuel again sustainable aviation fuel right now is at a very early stage but they are working on it so at least promote airlines who are at least having a more research program on that so those can be smaller and obviously avoid flying as much as possible but wherever you have to fly try to go for choices which are looking at the future in a way that's one absolutely so these newer aircraft are carbon fiber much lighter than yeah. what you were yeah. consuming in 2014 which we are looking at of what you are it's true yeah and and on, on like google flights as well at like the bound like it's quite up to date so like you can actually kind of see like you know indigo kind of kind of kind of like has like newer aircraft so like actually they'll, they'll have lower, lower emissions as well so and that's an always so, constant like the new air, aircraft has carbon fiber better engine efficiencies and all that yeah so anyway just to keep moving forward so so 2023 i've tried to lower it of course i still took a flight and everything but it's lower and since we do have a diesel suv i like probably like but not to even use that and just use train, rickshaw, metro bus. Like we, we have like great public public transit here, so we might as well use that, right? Okay, I'm gonna keep moving forward um, onto investment just for a few minutes. Um, so it's, this is like a, a, a U.S.-based website where you can search any mutual fund or ETF, and it will tell you the um, fossil fuel exposure of that fund. So for example, this is the fossil fuel exposure for the uh, S&P 500, which is the largest 500 companies in the US. So it has a D rating. So it's got a lot of fossil fuel. So, so essentially the, um, the um, point I'm making here is like, our investments can, can also um, uh, like, Cause the, the um, uh, climate crisis or fund the climate crisis. US based, exactly. So, so, so actually, like, yeah. So, I, I like haven't I haven't kind of like um, found a platform yet for India, but but, but I'm thinking about making one. <laughs> so, if you're interested, we can all work together and make a platform. Yeah. yeah so, so you know, there's like there's like ESG ETFs that, that are better as well. Yeah, you've heard the word ESG. ESG. So yeah, you do that. Um, the, in the India recently kind of came, came out with a scheme called green deposits. It's like fixed deposit, but it, your the money kind of like, like funds, uh, renewable energy or, or like green, green projects. So you, yeah, you can, you can also look into that <clears throat> and our money that like, that like this. It, like so sitting in banks as well actually can also like help, like help, um, help, um, fund fund climate change so you can you, you can kind of like google google your bank and see if your bank kind of like supports like fossil fuel companies and, and coal power plants stuff like that but yeah I just want to move forward sorry you can no, so I think we actually had an interesting debate on this when we met earlier so one of the things that we need to be careful, given the complexity of the uh, topic itself, that this is going to be a transition. And there are going to be companies who are right now, like a cement company, a steel company, like the room that we are sitting is cement and steel, like that is all carbon emissions, right? So they will be transitioning. So 
I think when you are looking at from an investment perspective, have a more nuanced look at what the company is doing. Because if you get everything out, then cement and steel companies cannot transition because they don't have the capital to transition. So I think, and that goes to everything that we discussed in the till now is having more awareness and nuance in lot of these conversations given the complexity of it. What I am just referring to, to here is more on uh, uh, as individuals, you may also, there may be your choices and this was also referred to earlier, consumers and investing your capital into buying something is also an investment. So that's something that you always need to look at trying to buy from companies who are doing sort of a more better job. Beware of greenwashing. Greenwashing is a real problem in the system and I think every one of us is fooled in some ways. So do slightly more, more, more of your own research in that way. There are also uh, opportunities to invest if you are we come from an investment uh, family, so we do a lot of investment in actually startups and early stage companies. And if you are an angel investor in some of those things, try to invest and look at companies which are starting down that path of making a what we call more greener future. So that's also one. So that's on the private side of thing and the public side, as uh, Ru mentioned, that also look for those funds but have a more nuanced approach. A blanket approach may actually move, cause more harm, harm than good. Because if all the ESD people just dump all the heavy energy usage companies, then it's going to cause more problem actually. Because they are not going to shift. They don't have the capital to shift. So just adding that. Sure. You want, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll um, move, move to the materials panel. Thank you. Thank you. This is, oh, by the way, this is our last panel. Then we'll have the, uh, the um, how to get, get a man, management committee on board talk. Yeah. And then we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll kind, of, kind of wind up there as well. But like, and Nania yeah, will also share. Uh, sure, if you want, yeah. But if, we'll start here, and then you can join in at the end. Yeah. So feel free. You want to... oh, um... So I'm just going to talk from my experience and my journey of how I started making changes in my life. Um, so I'll just show you what's in my bag. <laughs> uh, I have a metal bottle. Uh, I have um, a monogram handkerchief. <laughs> so I have my own shows on it, a little touch that I like for myself. So instead of using tissue paper um, at restaurants or in the washroom, you can wipe your hands on this and just wash it instead of use and throw. Um, then I have uh, these metal straws, they're very easy to clean and easy to use, so good investment. Um, yeah, and then and then I have a pad which is biodegradable, so this company is uh, Anandi and they're 100% biodegradable. There are other companies also and there are other options like Period Underwear and Menstrual Cup, but um, this one works for me. And, there are some companies which are not completely biodegradable, but this one is. Uh, then, like if, this is usually like some stuff like this we keep in the car. So for grocery shopping, you can take this. Um, yeah, so that's some of the regular things that we can carry. So now like talking about that cloth bag. Uh, we know that these, um, whether it's a paper bag, it's a cloth bag, they also take up more resources in making as compared to like, like the cotton also has a water footprint, and then the paper is also cut in trees. So, in order to, uh, like, what do you say, break the point of the uh, usage of that, you need to use it a certain number of times to kind of make up for using a plastic bag. So, with like the organic cotton, you have to use it 20,000 times, which is like it will be durable, so you can use it that many times. You have to use it that many times in order to like nullify the impact of having of having it of having it produced, basically. Uh, with a normal cotton bag, it's 7,100 times. With a paper bag, it's 43 times, which they're kind of flimsy and might not withstand 43 uses, but it depends on how you use it. And then the bag sizes, I think the um, more plastic based bags, which not the, um, what do you call them? The use and, not the use and throw ones, but the higher grade plastic, which can be used for a lot longer. Um, so that's about like bags. Then, like I said, carry yeah, water bottle handkerchiefs. You can also carry, like, so suppose I'm going to a restaurant that I really like. I know I'm not going to finish their uh, portions. 
because they're huge portions, but I really like it. And I always take the takeaway. I can carry my own tip and be like, okay, put the remaining food in this. You can take it to your office canteen and be like, okay, instead of giving me your paper plate or whatever, uh, give me the snack. I want uh, pale, give it to me in this and use your own utensils. Places that you go regularly, you can do this for sure. Um, office canteen, college canteens. Um, it's easy to kind of implement. You just have to do it. Um, yeah, and then also if you're buying things in loose, then you can get the carry your own containers to then buy them. Now this is from my uh, I am not promoting any particular brand. These are just brands I have come across and work for me. So as we all know, like things like uh, hand wash or cleaning, household cleaning materials and stuff also have toxins in them because they're killing germs or whatever. So these brands are more of the uh, natural kind of uh, which which if they go into the water systems don't pollute our water system so um, their necessities is um, a zero waste company and they have these dissolvable things so they have it for dishwashers they have it for hand soap they have it like multi-purpose cleaner and stuff so it's just a sachet that kind of comes in those packets and then you have those glass bottles you put it in just put water in and you shake it so there is no say plastic of the container in the dispensers and stuff so you're really reducing that consumable plastic or your consumable waste that you're generating month on month uh, with all of your stuff. So similarly, um, these ones are like, these are the PEP, uh, the, yeah. the plastic. So they're like five liter cans. And I think PEP is the only 100% recyclable plastic. Yeah. So um, they, they are the ones that uh, like you can use. So Kuparo is also another brand that does that. And then um, Better Home also has a lot of products. One of their products is the detergent sheets, which are just sheets. You put one in one sheet for one full load of your uh, washing, and uh, it's just sheet, right? There's no your container is not there. Um, so these are all different kind of things. Um, you can also make your own bioenzymes at home. I mean, we tried it. We couldn't figure it out. Really? So leave it to the professionals. For me, at least, my choice. I Other people can experiment. Bio so you, you use all the fruits, right? Some of the peas. Okay. So I use it. I mean, I use it for mopping, for yeah, washing yeah. machine, for utensils, for hand wash, everything. So you use oranges and everything. Yeah. For plants, or the plants are just doing so well and green and fine. So that's something we can explore and we can ask people about. Um, so this is a shampoo bar. So now, those of you who are used to the liquid. Is for shampoos and eye washes and products? Yeah, so shampoo bar. No, I'm talking about the bioenzyme. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. That you can use for everything. All these things. All these things can be used. Okay, I will, I will look. Yeah. But as of now, I am using this. Um, these are shampoo bars. So they come, you can get them in metal containers also the first time. And then you can, whenever you buy the second one, it comes in paper. And then you just put it in the metal thing. You can carry it anywhere. And they're very easy because. It's, it's really good. And I also use this, which is like powder. So this is like Rita Amla. It burns your eyes, obviously. So don't keep it, put it in your eyes, but it's powder. And you just mix it. And this is also a great shampoo. It makes my hair really soft. And it's what we traditionally have all used for our hair. So yeah, and then this. This is another company, Juicy Chemistry. I don't like all of their products, but uh, this is like talc-free powder, so like body powder. And their packaging, is like it's, it's all um, plastic free and they also so some earth rhythm and juicy chemistry both have like a uh, plastic offset so you can pay to offset your emissions from that or the transport of it uh, i think even bare necessities are something like that so this one has i'll show you the packaging so it's like there's no plastic on the cover it's fully whatever this recyclable material is yeah so yeah, that, that's pretty much some of the stuff that you can do. Then uh, there are refillable companies who come in, you have glass bottles, and then they will put um, household cleaning products, whether it's toilet cleaning or slow cleaning, whatever. You can get it filled, hand wash, you can get it filled, shampoo, you can get filled, that type of stuff. So these things you can do. Um, moving on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> clothing. <laughs> clothing is very tricky. <laughs> Uh, because there is no good answer when it comes to clothing. 
everything is back. <laughs> uh, so the most sustainable thing is what is in your closet. Use what you already have instead of going out and buying new stuff. Uh, but if you must buy, then, like, I mean, you can just see, like, your jeans are going to use so many, like, tons of fresh water and, like, so much stuff is going into the, um, like, you know, landfills and stuff. You can go to the next place. So, when you're looking at clothing, um, don't be like a use and throw mentality. You have to look at the fabric, the quality. So I want to use what I buy for the next 10 years, assuming that I manage to keep a stable weight. Uh, I want to use it for the next 10, 20 years, like people who have sarees for decades. If you preserve your clothing well, if you buy good quality clothing, which means like the seams have to be, they can't be like loose things coming out. Um, you all know, like if you buy those flimsy uh, cotton stuff, after a few washes, it's just going to lose its shape. And you're not going to want to use it. So high quality fabric, if you invest in good quality clothing, can last you a really long time. And you don't need so many clothes. You you can do with a minimal set. You can keep using. And like I said, what is in your closet is more sustainable than you going out and buying more. But if you must buy, then some of the things you can do is uh, repair or replace uh, before replacing. Uh, swap with friends, donate clothes, then, uh, like I said, buy sustainable materials. You don't need to use, wash your um, like polyester-based clothing that often because it reaches microplastics into the water. So uh, as long as you can avoid washing it, um, there are certain times like you can go without washing it for so long. You just look into that and not wash it as often. Um, you can buy second-hand, especially like second-hand leather because it's already animals already killed, it's already out there in the system and leather lasts a lifetime, like it lasts a really long time. So yeah, if you buy, so so if you buy second hand, it is not, but if you buy second hand, second hand. So yeah, second hand. Second hand. So yeah, but if you must, because some people are like, we will not buy shoes. You should not be talking leather, leather. Okay. So no leather. Yeah, no <laughs> Even I, I don't, I, I wouldn't want to buy, like I don't buy leather anymore. But yeah, no if, if someone is like, I really have to have to have to Then you need to get them. This is not the crowd for it, but there are people who refuse to not. So for them. Um, and then, yeah, air dryer possible because the washing machine also generates more, uh, like the dryer takes more emission. <laughs> and uh, yeah, have a minimalistic lifestyle yes. and just yes. ask yourself questions like do you need to buy more and um, do I really need more of this? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Thank you. Very nice. So, Mamta. Yes. Hi everybody, I'm Mamta Astana. I represent uh, the Rotary River Mumbai Lakers. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. This whole thing about climate change is something that is on top of our mind. And uh, it is a big thing, as we just saw. It is just not one thing. It is about electricity, food, our consumption, what we think, do, want to do, will do. But it is a big thing. When we thought about this at home, we said, how is my thinking about this going to help? How is my thinking about this going to change? And that is where I firmly believe that we, the first thing is you are here. And you can see that there's a room full of 40 people who think that this is important. I need to show up on a rainy day like this. And that is where the beginning happens. And to, to give you an example, as a community, what we can do, we can do this. For 25 tons of low-grade plastic. When I'm talking of low-grade plastic, I'm talking of just packaging plastic. The plastic that we get when we buy our dal, chawal, sugar, rava, everything, plus what comes from Amazon and everything else. Now, or what I'm trying to say is when one person believes in it, we take that thought home, at least in Pawai. We are very lucky to have like-minded people who are working with us to make this happen. And that is what we have to collectively do. Now we have to remember that, you know, when choices that we make, our choice may not be easily understood by people around us. But 
We don't give up, we try, but we cannot be forceful. No, there is a small gap. So probably we will be able to convert 30 percent or make 40 percent understand this. I think that is also a good beginning. The problem happens if we look at wanting 100 percent to be with us and that is not what we do. And that is what all these community initiatives are all about. This. You know, make that change little by little. And still you will see that, you know, we will get there and fall, work there and fall. But the idea is not to leave it for a single day, a single month. And that is where we will start seeing the change. So if you see here, we started collection of plastic, this low-grade plastic, uh, 15th of August 2020. That was the time when we were all at home, right? And we started, the first collection that we did was 79 kgs. You know, we did it for a little while. We had only nine buildings. We could have stopped, but we did not. We kept on and on. Today, we are about 35 buildings. And we see that some buildings drop. You know, and again, when the data goes through them, everybody starts saying, hey, hey, we need to do this. Remember, segregation at source is the most important. I know you mentioned that, you know, it can be, somebody said that it can be together. No, the more you segregate at source, the more outcome of recycling can generate. Obviously, we also talked about reduce. We talked about, you know, uh, reduce. And all these are very important. And the most important thing is showing up and making sure that you start making the change. You will say, okay, if I change all the lights in LED to my room, my house, how is it going to matter? It is going to matter. You know, that is how we, Rotary of Mumbai Lakers, came together. When we started, we did not have much to do anything 12 years back. But we stuck because we felt that even a drop in an ocean is making a difference. So thank you everybody for being here. And uh, I think the most important thing is, this is the beginning. We need to grow. And you have to be the people who are going to make this happen. Get more people. Right? Get that change. Get your building to change. And see, each of this is not easy. Just be persistent. Just be patient. If not today, we will see it changing or happening probably three years, five years down the line. This is not a change we are going to do overnight. But we need to do it. Thank you for patiently listening. Okay, so back to this story that I'm kind of creating here. I like didn't I didn't, didn't write my uh, my uh, material material consumption because like it's hard to actually calculate exactly what it is because it depends on what you buy, how much plastic you use, etc. But just for example, um, in 2014 I bought an iPhone 6, 64 kgs of CO2. So basically, the like what point I'm making here is like each thing that we buy has a carbon footprint. So we just keep that in mind. You know, like we were saying, use. Um, one other thing that, that I wanted to share is even even uh, construction, like we were saying before, steel, cement, everything has a carbon footprint, which can be huge, right? So 66 tons for one person buying a flat, that's, you know, two tons a year, that's like, it's gone, you know, the budget's gone. So anyway, so that's something to, to, to kind of like, um, 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 Keep in mind for a second home, you know, like is it necessary? Because because that second home might outdo all the plastic recycling you're doing for your whole life. Um, yeah, and plus the kind of construction, it can we have more environmentally friendly construction, that kind of thing. So. Already home, then you go once in five years. Huh. <laughs> exactly, you know. Standing there for anyway. Okay, anyway, move on. Um, we're out of time, so I'm going to move on to the climate action building. So thank you guys so much. We can now welcome the chairman of Richmond to talk about how he passed climate climate solutions in Richmond. And yes. so I represent the biggest barrier. Tell me how I can help. Tell me how I can help. That is how I can help us majorly. Yeah. 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 Difficult for me to convince you all the political committees. Oh, but if we've already implemented it here, they will listen to you. So, a question. Use me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Whenever you want. Because we have tried segregating plastic and us, like, nobody listens. No, but can I help with that answer? We did a whole trial in our society, very good with plastic. But the question for you is, um, so in our okay. society, we have a whole bunch of us, we have a whole group called Green Warriors, we do a lot of eco friendly things for plastic segregated water, right? Everything happens. But when it comes to a lot of we move to LED lights, but it's a solar for example, it happens. So it takes a lot of time. It has to pass through the ATM. AJM people have to approve costs. You know, there's so many roadblocks that by the time from the inception to actual implementation, <coughs> it's already been a year. So how does that work between the, it still has to go through the AGM, right? Any extra cost? So the chairman is convinced. Because the AGM is every six monthly what every Twice a year. So that's twice a year. It doesn't mean that you're not doing it. So, it's a. And people always are. You know, because it's a society, 750 families. Everyone is not eco friendly. They are cost conscious. Is it going to. The math is what matters at the end of On that slide. So. And you're making excellent points. So, anything we have done in the future is a math. It is. And without math, it's going to be very difficult. So, I want to say something. When Richmond did composting, Torino came here and saw, and we followed. So, what do you do? Sometimes does others. Yeah, it does. <laughs> no, it does. They, every building has the same. What do you mean? We rushed and we did composting. it, and now we discovered that a lot of people don't do what we did four years back. We followed it. So we were the first ones, and then I think most buildings in Troy have them. Any problems you faced when you started composting? There were issues like some people did that surprise smell. Because we have tried it before. Those are the conventional people who smell no matter when they stop that. So we had the same thing. People said we walk around and we get a lot of smell. So we had to redo a few things. So we we made a platform for it. If it rains, like, easily washable. <coughs> Things will happen, and and you will have to keep them. It's difficult to convince management committee yeah. at times. However, if you make a proper proposal where you can show the map, because there is nothing that we are doing doesn't have map at all. Everything leads to savings for the people. Right way and right knowledge. Exactly. Simple. Then only we can do it. So it will have to solve. But and if you guys can we can we at Richmond give them a template? That will actually be uh, like, I don't know, we can work on it. I am the one and I am the evaluate. No, no, but it's more than so we can I am a resource people. So so they want to pay like on the I am offering so myself as a resource fee. So anytime you need, get me. Yeah. I work on pull, not on push. So you have to pull, and you can get my email ID. Uh, don't call me too often. <laughs> Emails. Because the convince our committee and federation. So we can work with one building because our are slightly different. We didn't create any template. Can we know the names of buildings of people who are here today? Yeah, we cannot write it down on the paper. <coughs> I'm so sure what there. This is an example of my personal experience. I was trying to convince one of the buildings in our federation to start composting. And it was a few months process. It was partially funded by one of the NGOs and people at the building had only chipped a very small amount, which would not be more than 500 per household. You easily spend that much money in towers. But people are not even willing to do that. The committee itself is not convinced because they think people are not willing to, so they don't pitch the idea to the president. Or the committee makes it mandatory that we have to do it. People have to do it for 500 rupees and have to do it. is nothing in today's time. People are not willing to chip in that small contribution also. So this is, I mean, they are like 500 rupees. So you are raising a slightly different point. It's not MC's idea, it's a barrier. Yeah. Barrier to people. And if people are a barrier, it's very difficult. Then you have to do a lot of things. MC's barrier is a barrier. MC's barrier is a barrier. MC's barrier is a barrier. 
Speaking of that kind of like competitive spirit that we all have, so so our plan actually is to collect data from um, as, as as many buildings as possible in Hawaii through this survey. So you can so this is a Google form you can fill out, um, and basically like they make a website that shows building names, actions, and then a check mark or a cross, and then essentially it'll be a very simple way. To like compare your building with your neighbor's building. In fact, Dhruv has made a survey which has been sent to a lot of groups. If you participate in that survey, that will help him to well, give you ammunition exactly. yeah. to fight your NC or other members. So I put your survey. This is this is this is the survey. And this QR code is a survey link. <laughs> if you scan it, you can get it. But I'll share it on WhatsApp as well. The yeah. more you help him, the better data we collect, and more forceful your argument becomes. One one more thing as well, we we like do. Sorry, just really quick, we like do, do um do um we do have proposals for composting and solar and LED lights already made for Richmond that 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 we can share with you as a template. I wanted to say that. Instead of water harvesting, which they talk about the strategy. So next time when we have such a gathering, we can talk about water harvesting. So we are going to tell us. Absolutely, yeah. We like water problems. Yeah, we. We didn't cover water, but we should. Members of the societies of the society, so that at least one can ask. If they are ask contents, also it will be easier to convince. Okay. Next time before this, like, I think we can give them a ten-day notice. We can ask the committee members and comment on it. So, 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 in fact, like, like, our next workshop that's being planned in, in my head, and of course, I'll share it with you guys if you think it's a good idea. Is basically um, uh, a, um, climate climate action in buildings workshop. So, so just kind of focus on buildings. Um, where we can we bring in chairmen, secretaries, proper management committees, and as a first step to that. We'd like, like to kind of get this data that, okay, what, what are your buildings doing right now? We'll put it on the website so it's clear to everybody to see. So, what I see is if I think we represent 10 million families, maybe more. So, if you could become the champion of problems, you make sure that this survey is done by your management and submit it, that'll help a lot. 
So if you could, you know, who's in which building? No, I mean like, yeah, you, you can like, just, like if you have some QR code or just, just message yourself. me on WhatsApp, you can message me. Just put, your, message, just put yeah. your name, yeah. which building? And you make sure that the management committee does this survey. That'll help a lot. Good idea. Because so I've sent it, there's a, there's a group of uh, chairmen and secretaries of the sent it to them, three responses to that. <laughs> it takes a little while, but we make it happen. Three responses. And we tell them to send it to them, three responses. Maybe the secretary can't do it. Three responses. Certainly, Sadia wouldn't have responded. Even I don't know. You guys can also take this if you want. Okay, any okay. other thing I can help you with? So I'm a resource. I offer you as a resource. Myself, yeah, the solar and the receive template okay, great. Sure. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Last two slides five impactful climate actions. You can read through them for 10 seconds stuff we've talked about already. But the first thing you can do is go home and just like, just switch to green power immediately. It's very fast to do, you can do it in five minutes. Adani or Tata Power. Okay, um, we have like a, like a WhatsApp community now, Boy Climate Action WhatsApp community with subgroups. Like you have like consumption, electricity, food, and transport, investing. Kind of like, like our, our workshop today. The um, the uh, the um, pan um, pep, pep, um, panelists who spoke today, um, if they if, if if they like, can be in those WhatsApp groups to kind of answer more questions to keep the conversation going. And this group, that the first one, it's called it's called uh, the way um, climate action social now, by the way. And the reason reason I call it social is because all of us have anxiety. I feel. For, because of climate change sometimes. So basically, it's a way to kind of just to just connect, share, meet in person, and be like, you know what? I'm so like worried, worried about climate change. Can, can we have a conversation? So anyway, that's what that's about. Uh, QR code is here. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure, you can go. So uh, at this point of time, I would really like to thank uh, your group, okay, for sharing this this is, this is very important and uh, each of us, while we have it in the back of our heads, in our busy life, it just gets dropped you know, and uh, we need somebody to spear at us and thank you very much Joe, for doing this and you are making sure that we're getting a lot of partners here in the room yeah. and which is the another very important thing here and uh, thank you and we are all with you and give us a shout for anything you need and we will do those baby steps for you. Thank you. If you have free time, let me know. And I'll, yeah, like, there's there's work to be done. So, like, website, everything. So, all that. So, graphic design and website help can be used for sure. And, of course, organizing and stuff. Like, say, let's all become our drop in the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make the ocean clean, free of plastic. And uh, as a community, uh, like, uh, we'll the ocean with Mumbai Lakers, as we have around 69 members now. And uh, we are also doing a plastic free Hawaii where we are introducing around 637 links where you can get into connection. So, um, like if you can get a templated form, like you mentioned, let's reach out to each and every building. So, our Lakers can be a channel to thanks the companies that you mentioned. For the navigation. Yeah, for, the, uh, for all the calls that we have the solar that you mentioned, the composting, and many more. Uh, so, certainly we should take this uh, step here. And one more thing where uh, I as an individual, I see that when I'm trying to uh, recognize between the organic and the non-organic, the non-organic looks very much uh, polished and looks 
good will appear in that I end up buying that. But I don't even have enough uh, awareness that uh, there's a lot of gimmicks that's running around uh, the organic stuff. So that's the reason if we can have more of uh, organic farmers market here, where we can get into the society. But actually, we used to have that, so let's, uh, if we can just encourage that more and uh, we as a community can do it. I okay. think that would be there's one happening every Sunday at Omega Building. Used to have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the morning, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. Can you put it on the group? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. 